Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of the Pastor's Corner. Well, maybe not exciting, but hopefully inspiring. I hope that you had a good week and that the Holy Spirit is protecting you and guiding you into deeper awareness of God's love for you and a deeper relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Discipleship is a very exciting adventure. And last week I highlighted just how many challenges and problems there are in the world for us to serve the Lord and to fulfill his desire that we be light for the world and to help guide people back onto the path of peace and holiness. This is obviously, obviously no easy task, but we do our best when we lead by example. People need to see the difference having Jesus as our Savior makes by our words and by our actions. We need good role models to help us when we get discouraged and to show us that saying yes to God's plan for our lives is not only possible, but very desirable. One person who points the way to Jesus with precision and eloquence is our Blessed Mother Mary. When she said yes to God's invitation to be the mother of our Savior, Satan's plans got severely thwarted and altered. Her yes was part of the undoing of Eve's no to what God had asked of her in the Garden of Eden. This is one of the reasons a title for Mary is often the New Eve. Our Blessed Mother inspires us to embrace the plan God has for us and to serve Him faithfully through good times and challenging times. One of the great gifts to our Church is the devotion of the Holy Rosary. Through this devotion, we accompany Mary through the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. We see the depths of God's love for us as Jesus embraces the Father's plan to redeem us. October is the month of the Holy Rosary, and the Church invites us all to rediscover the beauty, power, and simplicity of this devotion. How well I remember an experience that I had when I had to make a difficult visit to my grandmother who was very ill and in the hospital. She was confused and pain, and it was really difficult to see her in this state. I thought the world of her and felt such a blessing to have her and my, all of my grandparents be a, a very important part of my upbringing. As I drove home, a wave of despair began to hit me, so I decided I would pray the rosary. It happened to be a Friday, so I was praying the Sorrowful Mysteries. The first mystery, of course, of the Sorrowful Mysteries is the agony in the garden, where Jesus embraced the cross and made the life-changing decision to suffer for our sins. I thought of my grandmother, all alone in her hospital bed in such a bad place. I asked the Lord to be with her and to comfort her. As I continued praying the rest of the mysteries, a wonderful sense of peace came over me, and I realized that it was time for my grandma to enter into the mystery of redemption and to share in the sufferings of Christ so as to share in the joy of his resurrection. The main thing I'd like to highlight here is that the rosary brought me a great sense of peace and a profound awareness how close the Lord is to us in our suffering. Satan wants us to believe that we're out of the reach of God's grace at such moments because what we are suffering is so difficult. But that, of course, is a lie from the father of lies. God is most especially close to us in our suffering. And sometimes when we're in such a dark place, our faith comes to the forefront and we realize profoundly that we are holding on to Jesus' hand who will lead us through that difficult time. If you're used to praying the rosary on a regular basis, I don't think I have to convince you of its power and beauty. If you don't pray the rosary on a regular basis, I would like to invite you to take another look at this powerful devotion. You will find strength, love, and solidarity with the Lord through it. This evening we kicked off our youth mass at 5.30 p.m., followed by a wonderful dinner, and now the kids are meeting for, or excuse me, the teenagers are meeting for Life Teen. And I want to remind you to please keep them in your prayers, and especially those who will be preparing for the Sacrament of Confirmation. That is such a wonderful and powerful sacrament, and we need our young people to take their place in the world and to realize that God is calling them by name to make a difference for, for His kingdom. Blessed Mother Teresa used to say that, Holiness is simply doing something great for God, and I think our youth are doing something great for God and want to do something great for God, so they need our support and help. I thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Pastor's Corner, and I'll see you again next week for another episode. God bless you.